All right, welcome to another episode. This is Ab, a time for clocks, amateur clock repair reveal history channel. I do have the little air conditioner on. It makes some noise because even though this is September 11th, it is still plenty hot. 106 degrees today, which is 41 Celsius for my friends around the world. And what can you do? Okay, this episode is about trying to get a little, this is the little Sekosha wall clock I showed in my history of Japanese clocks video. And I want to try to get it up and running. There, there were a number of clocks I could have chosen to do a video on, but I chose this one to honor my friend uh, Practical Fixes who lives in another part of the world and his he's 70 years old and he told me his father bought a Sekosha wall clock before he was born and he bought it used so I don't have the same clock that he did he did send me some pictures a very nice clock but in the spirit of the Sekosha clock that he has in his house I want to try to repair this one and, and look inside I'm kind of eager to look inside because I don't know what I'm gonna find but from the case I can see that there's rust on every screw holding it on so and there's some minor case repair to do as well so let's just get into it we'll have to see if this is uh, brass or steel brass plated you never know if it's brass that should clean up very nice and interestingly there's a bit of alligatoring finish here it's kind of a crinkle so I'm guessing the original finish is pretty much gone I think it was rubbed off at one time Otherwise, that wouldn't still be there. I think these Japanese clocks were lacquered, but I'm not positive. Then, of course, the looks to be a brass pendulum, and a lot of these were the modern ones, at least. When you look at this shape, are just steel. So I'll have to see what that is to see how that'll clean up. And the key, I don't know if that's original or not. Could be. Does that even fit? Yeah, it fits. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to do is take all the hardware off the case. And on the side here, the little latch, just supposed to hook onto the screw, which is in too far, doesn't latch properly. So I think it's supposed to be a little eyelid or something that that catches on. So let's take the screw out. Wow, totally rusted. So keep all those separate. A little latch here. It's so caked with rust, I can't even get the tip of the screwdriver in there. I tried several screwdrivers, but none of them seemed to fit good. Wow, almost no threads. There's almost solid rust. Horrible rust condition there. This looks to be brass, a little catch. There's no glass in here. And regarding the dial, you can see a lot of the paint is worn away and the hands are touching they should not be touching a lot of rust on these grommets here or else that's dirt so I'm not sure I can touch that up or even if I want to try because it might just look horrible if I did it so I'll take out the screws on the hinge here and uh, take this door off Okay, I found a screwdriver with a little bit wider tip. I'd get my hand in there, but it'd be in the way of the camera. So I'm just gonna back these out until I can turn them by hand. Uh, that one just keeps turning around and around, so it's probably stripped. Okay, this seems to be the proper size screwdriver for this. All right, get to the point where I can undo them by hand. And then pull up on the door a little bit. That should help it come out. Oh, there we go. Yep. See, it was it was just stripped in there. Okay. 
the uh, this glass is etched has these channels in it all one piece very nice it's kind of loose in here though see and it does have all the way around it has these retaining pieces to hold it in this one's a little loose uh, we'll have to see about getting that in there better and the upper part there's supposed to be glass here in the upper part which is gone it's supposed to go between right there that's where it's supposed to go so these will come out looks like a one-piece frame but this this retaining frame it was originally held in you can see the screw holes here little little oval brass plates that had little uh, screws in that's what held that in I saw another clock with that so I'm gonna have to make some okay but this should just lift out yep there we go see Better be. Nope. Oh, now it's coming all apart. It's coming apart in pieces. Well, maybe that's supposed to be like. No, there's glue on the end. Is that how that was supposed to be? Yeah, that was glued at one point. Okay, we'll just uh, we'll just save those very carefully. And we'll take out take off the hinge. The hinges are really really tight, and the pins worked its way up a little bit. I'll have to clean those up. And I'm going to note the orientation and that's that's going to be the way I put them back on. So I'll just make a little a little uh, inscription here showing which way and which piece. I can see right away that one of these retaining wood clips is on top of the other one so it's not even actually hitting the glass and that I think is making it loose. So I'm just going to pull these little brad nails out, take these wood pieces out, take the glass out. If you just insert a screwdriver and push up you'll make indent little indentations in the wood. Undesirable indentations. So it's better to better to use something like this. So what I'm going to do on this one since it's stubborn, oh there it goes, it had, just had a little seal there that you had to break. Okay. Then this one should come out. Okay. And this glass should come out. You can see it's all nice one piece. That's pretty irreplaceable. I don't know how you'd ever replace something with that etching in there. Just need some cleaning. Okay, so now on the door, everything is removed, and I can and I can see by way of by way of problems. See this this part here? There's a gap. There's a gap right there, and on the corresponding side, there's a gap right there. It's not mated properly. In fact, it's loose. See that? And this nail holding it in, it was probably, I'm thinking it fell on the floor, the top glass broke, and this was dislodged, and when they hammered it back in, they got it too far apart. So I'm going to have to take out that nail and reposition it. Looks like it was glued as well. And I have to scrape out all the inside. Make sure it's nice and flat for when the glass goes back in. And again, little dings and dings and dongs around the edges. I don't mind that. It kind of gives its character from its age, but uh, where the bare wood is showing, you want to try to color that. 
this miter looks like it was not repaired properly. There's a gap there. See that? But the other ones are nice and tight. That's the way they should be. Get that one here. So on the back, there's um, there's a label in J Japanese. For anyone who can read that. So I'm just going to take the hanger off, two screws, and the uh, positioner at the bottom, two screws. And since there's nothing here anymore, I don't see any reason for that. So I'll try to, it looks like a label at one time. I'll just remove that. But first, I think, uh, oh, the taper pin for the hands fell out. There was a little taper pin. When I turned it over, I think it fell out. Well, good luck finding that. Hmm, I did find it. <laughs> there it was. Okay, let's put that. Let's put that over here. So all that should just uh, on the hands. It should just lift out. There's probably so much oil on there. Now, the hour hand is usually friction fit. Look at all those hairs. So, it should pull straight up. Oh, easy. Looks like it'll probably have to be tightened. Alright, let me take off these. Um, Wow, that one's raised quite a bit. The screws that hold the frame for the dial on, and also there's a unique feature here if you can see it. See this pin here? There's another one up here. Those are to keep the door at a certain distance from not bottoming out of the case because when the door is on like that they didn't want it hitting they went didn't want it that close so these are like standoffs so you should be able to adjust them in or out depending on how you want the door to touch nice and even so that's interesting and those are really rusted but they should turn out with a pair of pliers all right let's do these screws here See which screwdriver fits best. No, it's going to be that other one. That one right there. Yep, that one just goes round and round. Okay, let's take them out. Fairly long, totally rusted. See if this lifts. Oh, there we go. Early Japanese clocks, the dials were hand painted. And Hattori, he um, he actually had a night school, business school for his employees, where they learned calligraphy. Okay, so this uh, surround piece here has little brads that hold it to this back plate, and then the screws secure the whole assembly to this uh, frame in here. It's kind of a nice little flower design here. And Japanese clocks tend to have very reserved adornments and flourishes on them. Kind of, kind of in the less is more category. First look at the movement. You can see the S and a diamond inside a circle there right there so you know that is a Seikosha made movement they weren't trying to they weren't trying to pass off an Ansonia or an Ingram although Ingram and Ansonia might have influenced this movement that was theirs they made it okay 
gonna remove the wire bell here because everything in this case needs to be cleaned all rust removed all corrosion gone there we go I don't see any marks on the the gong base okay set that aside let's see if I release the count wheel if it'll do anything <laughs> Because uh, it was going a little bit, but I think it's pretty gummed up. You can see there's a lot of dirt in there. All right, screw here, screw here. Oh, screw here missing, screw here missing. And then each of the top for the um, for the movement. Let's take that out. Okay, all the screws for the movement I'm going to keep in a separate thing. Keep them all together. Hopefully they're all the same size. Okay. Should, should come out. So here comes the Japanese movement. Wow. Significant rust there. set that aside oh. inside the case doesn't look too bad everything seems to be solid blue blocks are in place there is some insect debris in here taking out the little hardware pieces and that and that'll be it for about it for this session and I'll come back see what else we can do Now that I have all the main components separated from the case, uh, I'm going to take all the case related parts and put them on my workbench and fix it over there. And I have to clean up all this hardware. You can see how much rust is on there. And then uh, the movement will be taken apart and cleaned. That's the plan. I'm sure, I don't know, well, I don't know what anyone else who works on clocks thinks about while they're working on them. But when I was taking this apart and then I, I really got a really good look at this label on the back, even though it's all in Japanese, it's a nice label. But it just hit me that every single person that helped make this, build this clock, they're all deceased. Unless they have extreme longevity. There are areas in Japan where people easily live to a hundred or a little more. So it just came to my mind I want to do the best that I can to make this clock just to really honor those who had a part in making it a bygone era. We'll see how it turns out.